Right. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Rooster Teeth Podcast. This week brought to you by Squarespace, Stamps.com, and The Zebra. I'm Gus. I'm Gavin. I'm John. You've, and that's it. That's, you've done it again. What, what did I do? Well. What? That's not my fault. Well, whose <laughs> fault is it, Gus? Let's say it's that's Gavin's Bernie's fault. It's Bernie's fault. <laughs> it's Bernie's fault. So yeah. he canceled. He canceled pretty last minute, but that's fine. It happens. And then okay, so it's partly my fault. So <laughs> <laughs> we kind of we had to come around. We so, had to come around. So uh, uh, Bernie wasn't sure if he was to be here tonight or not. He canceled, and that's fine. You know that stuff comes up. I, I totally understand why that happens. So this morning <laughs> at eight a.m., I sent a message. I slacked. We have our internal com- communication software. I slacked. Drew and I asked him, "Hey, do you want to be on the podcast?" Why Drew? Zeppelin? Um, because right now we're still Arizona Circle, still filming, so a lot of people are tied up with that. And um, so I was like, "Oh, I'll see if, if Drew wants to be on." He's never been on the podcast before, you know. And he's been on a couple of streams that we've done. Yes, uh, on the part of the stream. Nintendo Boys. So I was like, maybe you know, be good for people, more people to get to know him. So he's I, funny. Yeah, he's a funny guy. Slacked him. And didn't hear anything back all day. And then, like in another separate conversation in Slack, I saw he replied to someone else. And I was like. The fuck? Why didn't he reply to me? <laughs> so I went back and I looked, and apparently he has two Slack accounts, one that he normally uses and one that's un- that's like deactivated. And I slacked his deactivated account, asking if he wanted to be on the podcast. So why, in the name of Christ, could you slack a deactivated account? I don't know. And I, I did it from my phone. It didn't tell me anything, but I looked on my laptop, and it's like, oh, this account's deactivated. It's like, so so I didn't I didn't find that out until about 15 minutes ago. So I slacked his actual account. And I was like, hey, hey, just so you know, I, I, I sent this to you this morning. He's like, oh, you know, he really wanted to do it, but it was just like, it was too last minute and everything. So, sorry, Drew, I tried. Huh. That's, that's, the, that's, the, the, that's how it's my fault. Oh, um, you, your, your tablet. Someone found your tablet. Oh. Uh, that where? You lost the tablet? to Aunt John oh. Reisinger. I'm, 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 I, I'm, I, know where, I know where I left it. Why can't you take care of your... Things because I don't care about uh, possessions. They're just temporary, and I don't really care about them. I'm not no, I actually very much care about that. I'm <laughs> I'm a very poor man who cannot like stand to lose stuff like that. I I had a weird problem. Your tablet reminded me of this. I had a weird problem with my phone recently, <clears throat> where it was like I was having a problem with it that I was just living with. Like I, it was like one of those weird inconvenient things that you just kind of deal with, right? With technology? Like all the problems with your laptop? Like all the problems with my laptop. I call them the Gavins. Way, someone finally told me how to fix my problem whenever it happens. Oh. I have to like, I have to use a command line <laughs> uh, solution to like kill and restart the audio subsystem in OS X. And if you do that, then it, it fixes the audio problem. That's anyway, not a fix. It, it makes my <laughs> audio work fixed. without rebooting. It just takes like two seconds. Hey, hey chat, I'm in chat now. Um, so I was having a weird problem with my phone where Anytime I went, sometimes when I would plug it in at night when I slept, I'd wake up in the morning and it wouldn't be charged. And I, I couldn't figure out why, like just sometimes it wouldn't happen. Would it give you a, this accessory is not compatible? No, nothing. No oh. message, nothing. What I realized was that my lightning cable was kind of loose. So it's like, oh, when I plug it in, I have to kind of make sure it's like shoved all the way to the left. Yeah. And that it'll charge. And it was just like something I lived with for a couple of weeks. And uh, the other day I, w- I was sitting and I don't know why I started thinking about it. And I was like, I bet there's something in my charge port. <laughs> oh, like like a, some some sort of debris. Yeah, I, bet- I like that in the life of Gus Sorolla, You're like, I've done all the things <laughs> that I needed to do. Now I'm free to think about whatever I want. Right. I bet there's something stuck up my phone. So I went and I got a toothpick, <laughs> and I started uh, like just like scraping it through the inside of the uh, the lightning <clears throat> port. There was so much fucking lint in my charge port. Some pocket just filth from whatever, like from being in my pocket, just like mushed up gray black fabric. And nice. I just kept doing it over and over. And like, it seemed like more lint came out that could possibly physically fit <laughs> in there. And what, that, what was happening was it was keeping the lightning cable from going all the way in. Yeah. So I was like, I, I scooped all that out. Then I plugged the lightning cable in. And I was like, oh, it fits perfect. It's like the iPhone's belly button. Yeah. <laughs> but it was like, it was, it was a problem I, I dealt with for months. And then it's like, oh, there's, there's obviously something in there. I'm trying to think of problems that I have that I, I know I could fix if I just spent like, 20 minutes, but I just there's always projects around your apartment that are like 80% done or 90% done that you're like, well, I could just do the last bit (laughs) or I go play a video game right now or something like that. Like I have a few like items that have been framed and sitting there ready to be like, so I have a section of my wall in my apartment where I framed a bunch of like my valuable comics 
and I've put them up like in kind of a grid fashion on a wall. And I add as I get ones or as I buy new frames, I think because I found like actual frames that fit a comic perfectly. And since they're so individual, I have to like, and since I'm OCD, they have to be lined up perfectly and have to have the right, mm-hmm. like there's a, there's a whole ordeal. And so I have like 12 up, but then I have like another eight that I need to put up and they've been framed for months now. <laughs> they're just against a wall. They're somewhere. just, they're just, they're sitting there framed in a pile. Just, yeah. I haven't put them up. Yeah. I'm kind of really obsessed with making sure when I mount something on the wall that it's done correctly. Yeah. Like I've got a laser level. Yeah. I've got a normal like bubble level and I've, I've got to like measure it all out and like draw lines and like very faintly and like get everything lined up perfectly. <laughs> So that it looks right. Same. It's like, is everything supposed to be lined up? Is it going to be offset? If it's offset, like, what's the offset? What's the distance? It's like, I have to I have to do it so many times before finally, like, yes, does, this is how to do does it. Does Esther care at all? Yes. If it's, okay, she, so she, she does. She is, Same level. She is probably more particular okay. than I am, but it helps that I'm also particular about it. Because whenever we have to hang something, I don't get annoyed. I'm not like, oh my god, you made me do this five times. It's like, no, I want to make sure that we're doing this <laughs> right. Would she ever hang something? Uh, she trusts yeah, just me to do it. She she like she she can stand back. She has a better she has a better eye at whether stuff looks right or not. I have to measure, and mm. I have to like you know get it you know get tools and and make sure that it's done right. Where she can just tell like she can just eyeball it. I've moved quite a few times since I moved to the US, and it's the first thing I do now. Like when I move to a new place and everything's in boxes. Before you put your bed together. I mean, move is just plunk the bed down. Okay, so like <laughs> furniture is put together and in, in, in sitting in spots, but as far as unpacking boxes, you put up frames? I put up all the shit that I took down, just so it feels like home straight away. Otherwise, I will never get around to it. It it's, takes me like two to three months to fully unpack, because yeah. I, I, I never like take any time off. I'm just like, as I, as I need stuff, I'll pull it out, and eventually I'll just like tip out the edge of the, the end of the boxes. Do you do this thing, this, this is something <clears throat> that I do really bad, whereas you, you travel, and you come back with a, with a, you know, your suitcase full of stuff. And instead of like unpacking it all, it just gets unpacked bit by bit as you need stuff again. Like, oh, I do need those pairs of shoes that I had in that suitcase. So I'll take those out. I was like, oh, I did need that like belt that I packed, but it's just all sitting there and just slowly bit by bit unpack. No, I, I immediately do it. Immediately unpack and start the wash. You're I, I immediately man. unpack and repack. <laughs> you, you, you travel like a lunatic. Though. I just keep a go bag. It's like it's packed already. So you're you are are you packed right now for a trip? I'm packed for a trip, but you don't have a trip. Uh, I got one in a couple of weeks, but but nothing I packed like it like two weeks ago. Gotcha. That's awesome. It's not. <laughs> no, it's tragic. Why? Why is it? Why is it tragic? Just because I know I'm going to leave again, and I don't like traveling much anymore. You, what was, I was watching some video with you or something like that and you were, but maybe it might have been this podcast that you had like two weeks where you didn't, oh, it was the always open thing. You were talking about you, uh, you yeah, hadn't traveled for like two weeks. I haven't traveled since the last ghost hunt, which I think is coming up on three weeks ago. Yeah. Which is amazing. I've That's loved good. it. You're going to forget how to fly. Yeah. I'm actually worried I might not hit exact plat this like- year. And I'm and by worried, I mean it'll be amazing if I don't. Yeah. It'll be glorious. You're gonna have a little bit of status, but you don't need that much status. Yeah. <laughs> just a little bit of normal platinum. <laughs> yeah, just like just normal platinum, not executive <laughs> platinum. It's like super travel. I, I've problems. been deliberately saying no to almost everything. You said just, thanks. Thanks for saying yes to the podcast. I'll say yes to this. It's mm. very it's very close to where I work. <laughs> <laughs> it's, right over there. it's easy enough to get to. And it's not exactly a flight from your home either. Yeah. And I'll just recharge. Over time, and then I'll be ready to travel more again, I guess. What have you been filling your time with with this time off? Achievement Hunter? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just normal Actually work. being in NVIDIA. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I just finished up my first edit in ages. I haven't edited a slow-mo video since, oh, like, December. Because what, of What did you guys do in it? Uh, we did a video with Rhett and Link. Oh. Sabring... Champagne bottles open. That's pretty good. And I'm, it's like one of my projects. That's, it's like 98% done. And I just can't bring myself to finish <laughs> it. Like the only thing I have to do now is go in and put in all the, the whoop, whoop, sound. Oh, the sound stuff. <laughs> just like, I hate doing that. So it's, be really, funny if, it's really annoying. It'd be boring. funny if the last thing you have to do is just drop the intro in. And you, <laughs> yeah. you don't want to do that. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Uh, but I'll probably slop that up tomorrow. You, how, how happy would you be if someone developed software that would auto detect the moments in your videos and when put in the proper sounds. Yeah, I mean, it wouldn't be hard. I mean, you just look at where all the video ramps up and down. Yeah, and just I'm saying is that there's, it. there's a pattern. Yeah, it'd be great. <laughs> it's 
get... Or I could just hire an editor like every <laughs> other damn YouTuber. Yeah. You just get an intern. You just get like yeah. a, an audio intern to add the sound effect. Yeah. That's actually like a very common task for an intern to do as far as like editing or production stuff. Like boop. production interns are often like the little menial tasks like put in the boop, the boop and the boop. Do you wait? I have a question. Those sounds. Yeah. Do you have names for those sounds? Like those audio files have sound have names? Uh, that one's just called slow down. Boop. And then I just reverse it. It's not two different clips. That's, Maybe it should that's be. That's not as good as the answer I was hoping for. Yeah. I could rename it boop. What, <laughs> I wanted to call it speed up. And then the opposite, slow down. I mean, it's still just one. What do you want from me? <laughs> it's like that joke that years ago on The Simpsons that they, uh, when Homer's talking to that voice actress, she goes, Yeah, I used to do the Roadrunner, meep. And he goes, Don't you mean meep, meep? She goes, Nah, they just looped it. <laughs> 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 they have to pay me to say it once. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> meep. <laughs> um, so I, uh, so you were talking about traveling, and it, remi- it reminded me of this yesterday. Someone sent me, you know, on Instagram, people can, you can set it so that people you don't follow, like you have to approve their messages. Yeah. And I have it set up that way. And uh, someone sent me a message, someone I don't follow, just like some random person sent me a message. Uh, let, me, let me find it. And it was honestly a little insulting. Uh, they, they sent me a message. Can you see messages on the web browser of Instagram? I, I, I took a screenshot of it. Oh. And that's what I'm looking at. I, I sent it to Jeff earlier. Someone sent me a message that said, have you ever seen the 1980 comedy movie Airplane? Just in case you haven't, I recommend it. I was like, I'm a, I'm a 41 year old man. I watched that movie when I was a little kid. Like, have you seen the movie Airplane? It was like such a weird recommendation to get. Was that spam? Like, why? I don't know. And it's also like, why did you go out of your way to send me that? Like, who, who, who just randomly messages people on the internet? Like, hey, have you watched this 39 year old movie? You should they, have replied in jive. <laughs> <laughs> or surely you must be uh, joking. Just yeah. say that in reply. Yeah. It was just it was just such a weird message to get. I, I, I got it last night and it was just like, I was just staring at it. I was like, I don't, I don't know how to reply to that. <laughs> that's, a, that's a real bizarre one. It was really weird. Um, I have that set up on Instagram as well. <clears throat> I don't ever approve anybody's messages or respond to anybody. But every once in a while, I'll just look to see what people have sent me. I assume I have that on as well. I don't get messages from... Strangers. You don't use Instagram I'm... too often. Right? I, I look at a lot. On, I don't post a ton. You're a, you're a lurker? Yeah. It's like the opposite of Twitter. You you lurk and also don't even like... Do you not, do you not like like video, uh, images very much? Yeah, all the time. You do? So that's you do that interaction. Yep. A little double tap is as far as you'll go. You can double tap. You, you, can, <laughs> <laughs> you can double tap the image instead of having to click the heart. Yeah. He's a double oh, tap scroll, double I think tap that's scroll, how I scroll, like scroll, stuff by accident. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good to know. They uh, they just announced that uh, Facebook just announced that I guess what was it several million Instagram accounts may have been compromised. Yeah, they it's like was, originally like only like ten thousand. They said it's like yeah. mm, maybe a million. They were storing people's Instagram account passwords in plain text, and that file may have gotten stolen. Yeah. Why would they do that? Why, that's a really good question, Gavin. Why would it not be encrypted in some way? Why would they have it in plain text where anybody could read it and not in an encrypted format? So if you're watching this and you have Instagram, change, change your fucking password. Instagram password if you haven't already. Uh, yeah, this is awful. What do you do when you accidentally like something? Do you unlike it really oh, quick or just leave fuck it? Fuck yeah, unlike it. I, I like stuff by accident constantly. I'm always afraid it's going to be something embarrassing. It's, it hasn't really been anything embarrassing yet, but I'm always afraid. Uh, John Mayer had a really funny thing on his story that I felt resonated with me a lot. Which is, he was, it was a joke, but it was a joke based off of a truth in that he was making up this story about how he often, when he's scrolling through Instagram, will see a picture and he'll want to like it, but he'll notice that it was something that was just posted. And so he knows that if he likes it right now, there's a chance that might come across as like thirsty or like too eager of like just, just watching someone's like feed. And then they post and you go and, and, and like it really quick. So he had these post-it notes where he writes down <laughs> the, the account profile, the post number, when he saw it, and then schedules when he should like it. And so then he writes it, puts a reminder in his phone at a time of like, like, like Halsey's uh, it, uh, image she posted from, um, from a few hours ago. But I felt like, like it was a joke, but it's honestly like often if I'm go open to Instagram and I see something like, ah, that's too, that was like a second ago. I so can't So you want like a it. like delay. Yeah, on Instagram that, that's, feature. That's, that's even more effort. 
God. There's even more like <laughs> I, I, if I see I don't care if it's just posted it just so happens I was looking right then I, I like it right away That's one to explain to a caveman. Yeah. I, wa I want a like delay on Instagram <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, I need you to explain to me what it's like living without like anxiety and neuroses that I have because you're exp you're you're I describing so. something that I don't understand I guess so man. It's just like yeah, I don't, I just, I don't care. I'm if I like something. I'll just like it <laughs> I'm, I'm the same way. Yeah, and, then, and that happens frequently like I think I probably liked your bedhead photo as soon as you posted it because I was just like, just I just happened to be like refreshing Instagram hey, and I think it popped up. Thanks. And I was like, oh, I like that. <laughs> so, what are you doing after this? <laughs> <laughs> I got him. That was good. Are we watching a uh, Crystal Palace at some point? Oh man, I, I so I haven't seen. Uh, I, I kind of fallen off on <clears throat> Premier League, but I was talking with Brian, where he's over there about uh, Premier League before the the show started. I guess they beat Arsenal this weekend. Season's gonna end soon. Wait, yep. is Crystal Palace? A soccer team? Yeah. There's a team called Crystal Palace. Yeah. <laughs> no what? one thinks that's absurd? That's, uh, that's that's kind of why I like them. It's pretty absurd. It's absurd. It sounds like a level on Mario Kart. Uh, what, like Redskins is a better team name? <laughs> no, it's not. That's, uh. a, that's a racist one. Crystal Palace isn't racist, but it does sound like some sort of RPG level. It sounds like I, I would race the shit out of Crystal Palace. <laughs> 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 What other soccer teams have Mario Kart level names? Uh, um, Sorry, football, if I'm confusing you. Arsenal, we've got Everton, Man United. Crystal Palace. Uh, who do, who, where, where, where are they located? Crystal Qu Palace. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell's wrong with you? <laughs> the Crystal Palace Crystal Palacens? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Are there any others that sound like they could be Mario Kart levels? I mean, most most sports team names are Look absurd. up the current Premier League. I don't even know which teams are in it anymore. Like, we've mm -hmm. got a team called Los Angeles Dodgers, and that just is <coughs> silly as well, but it's not like... I feel like you could race LA Galaxy. Yeah, but like, I think it's because it's two words. It's It's a location with an adjective. Arsenal, um, Ravenna, Albion, Burnley, Cardiff City. That's the team name. Well, it's from they're from Cardiff. But what's their? But isn't there like uh, L.A. Galaxy? That's the lo Los Angeles is the location. Galaxy is the team. So is it just Cardiff City is the team? Yeah. So you want like a place name and a thing? Yeah, that's like how my team. What are what are they? Hold on, there's something. Tottenham Hotspur. I, 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 I can't tell you where the spaces were, what you just said. <laughs> the, the Cardiff City looks like their mascot is a swallow of some kind, maybe? What? Of the Cardiff peoples? Yeah. Cardiff is in Wales. Wait, say what you just said again. Tottenham Hotspur. <laughs> That's not where that broke. And it's like a... Ta Tottenham? The Spurs. Tottenham? The little cock Was, Is with Tottenham it's... one of the words? Yep. Yeah, very good. And then... Hoff? <laughs> what was there? Tottenham Hoffman. <laughs> the, the Hoffers. The Hoffs. Uh, how about Huddersfield Town? That's the team name or the location? Huddersfield. What the fuck? You guys need to have a standard of how you name these football teams. What about this one? Arsenal. But do they, is, is, is that's just, you call it Arsenal? Yep. It's not like... Arsenal Football Club. It's Ars, is that the, okay. I mean, it's, it's in London. I don't understand this sport. <laughs> I don't understand this sport. So they're the London Arsenals? Well, there's a lot of London teams, like Tottenham's <laughs> in London as well. London's a big city, dude. Wait, so this, what was Tottenham again? Tottenham Hotspur. <laughs> Slow the fuck down when you say that! <laughs> I need to know what the words you're saying it are. In his defense, it's one word. You can't it is one word? Yeah. Then tell me that! Well, Tottenham's one word. Yeah, Tottenham, and then the other word is one word. Yeah, Hotspur? Hot. Hot. Spur. Like spur. a spur on the back of a I have a British boot, girlfriend, a, I still can't understand you. Or a cockerel's leg. Okay. You work at Rooster Teeth, you should know that. A cockerel's leg? A hot spur. What's- why would I need to know a hot spur? What's a spur? This little- 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 little ching thingy. <laughs> on, <laughs> the little ching. Oh. <laughs> the on, they make- that's the onomatopoeia! You know? Yeah, but in- like, that's the man-made version. What is the actual- what's a spur? There's not a man-made spur? Oh, you were talking about, like, cowboy spur. Yeah! Oh, I didn't realize. What's a, what's a non-man-made spur? Like the back of a thing on the back of a bird so leg, that's what they it? call it spurs because it is a, it yeah. is a thing on the back. I didn't know that. Go Google him a spur on a bird. <laughs> I know <laughs> what you're so describing. Can someone in control I know what you're describing, I just didn't know that And the that logo was... for Tottenham is a bird. <laughs> <laughs> 
And the mascot's called Chirpy. Yeah, that's so cute. Yeah. Look, you can kind of see it. Uh, it's kind of small. I know what it is. I don't need. Oh, now you know what it is. Sorry, John. <laughs> Sorry to waste your time. Look there, spurs. Hey. Tarsal spurs on her collar. Tarsal on her spur. Tarsal spur. Okay. Um, it's called a hot spur. <laughs> <laughs> Ber Bernie's texting me right now. He's texting both of us, actually. He... Why is he always in... He's having flight problems. Why does he keep going through that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, did he go through that airport? What's the one? <laughs> Detroit or something? I don't want to say oh, where he is, he's, just he's in case He's got he... problems. <laughs> we'll, we'll leave it there. That's awful. <laughs> Lots of cancelled flights. Yeah. It's a, it's a mess. Um, here, let me read this thing here. Uh, I want to remind everyone, this episode of Receive Podcast is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace has been a friend of the podcast for a very long time, so when you need a domain, website, or online store, we're always going to say make your next move with Squarespace. Squarespace has launched even more templates to make your life easy. Each template is a starting point for a wide range of projects. Uh, whether you're pushing a side hustle or promoting your main gig, you can create a beautiful website with a Squarespace all-in-one platform. There's nothing to install, patch, or upgrade ever. Uh, it's easy to set up or transfer your domain on Squarespace, and you're able to manage all of your domain and building settings in one place. It's also never been easier to sell products or services online. Squarespace allows you to manage your products, orders, and inventory easily. You can start your free trial today at squarespace.com. Go to squarespace.com slash roosterteeth to get 10% off your first purchase. That's squarespace.com slash roosterteeth for 10% off your first purchase. You know we've been asking you to share your Squarespace creator websites. Gone through, pick some more of our favorites. As a reminder, with Squarespace, you too can make sites like this, so be sure to tweet at us with hashtag RT Squarespace. Uh, and here's a few of our favorites. First up, we have at Wolfen Creek. Some editing there, videos, live streams, more. Uh, next up, we have V Provost164. Uh, photography. And last but not least, at Kiptacular. So thanks for showing us your websites, and uh, if you use Squarespace, don't forget, uh, send it to us with hashtag RT Squarespace. Maybe you'll be on the podcast. Man, I want that pizza oven on wheels. That yeah, thing looks top. I go for some pizza. We have we have pizza. There's over pizza there. over there. Did you get any pizza? No. I had a salad today. Yeah, you can get some afterwards. Yeah. It'll still be there. No? Not a fan of cold pizza. Cold pizza's good. Yeah. Some cold pizza? <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, I, uh, I, 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 I had a fucking computer problem over the weekend. Uh, there's so, a command line you can use. There's a command line. So, you know, I was out of town for a while. So several five weeks apparently. Several days ago, I was like, okay, I need to beat up. I need to beat up. I need to boot up my computer <laughs> and let it start downloading all the updates it has. Right, like Windows updates, all the different games, whatever platforms. Like, it's, I'm just gonna leave my computer on and downloading updates for a while. So I left it on for several hours. It downloaded all of its updates, installed everything, rebooted a few times. Everything's great. Cool. So fast forward a couple days. This past weekend, I was like, I'm going to finally play The Division 2. Oh. I want to play Division 2. People have been talking so much about it. I'm going to play it on, on PC. So uh, I went and uh, I bought it on the Epic Store, which may have been problem number one. I'm thinking about this in <laughs> retrospect. That may have been the start of my problem. <laughs> so I bought it on the Epic Store. Why not on Uplay? It was like 54 bucks. It was like a slightly discounted or something. Okay. I was like, all right, I'll just, I'll just buy it on the Epic Store. So I go to buy it on the Epic Store, and it's like, I hit like fill my credit card saved everything purchase and it's like there and then I get an error it's like there was a problem with your transaction you'll be refunded in three to five days I'm like what so I was like okay well let me delete my credit card from my account re add it and I'll try it again so I delete my credit card re add it try to go to the purchase purchase there's an error processing your transaction you'll be refunded in three to five days like what the fuck my credit card's fine so all right fine I'll use a different credit card so I delete my credit card from my account add a different credit card go through the process the <clears> purchase <throat> is fine great cool. So it starts downloading. It's like a 54 gigabyte download. It's like, all right, it's going to take a few minutes. So it finishes downloading everything. It you know, goes through downloading, verifying, installing. Cool. Division 2 is installed on my computer. It's epic. Uh, <laughs> so then I go, to, <laughs> I go to launch. I hit launch, and it says, oh, uh, I don't have Uplay on my computer. So it's like, you need to download and install Uplay in order to play Division 2. <laughs> so Fine. if you don't use Uplay Whatever. to buy it, you need to... <laughs> Can you buy on Uplay? That may be able to in Steam. Uh, so I hit fine, whatever. Install Uplay. Uplay downloads and installs. And then Uplay's like, so uh, you want to install Division 2? I was like, what? No, I've already got it. So then I, I point the, the, the Uplay installer to where I've already just installed Division 2. And it's like, cool, downloading. It, what? It downloads the whole <laughs> game again and reinstalls it. I'm like, what the fuck? So then uh, 
It finishes installing. Like, okay, cool. After downloading 106 gigs, I'm going to play my game now. I hit, and then Steam opens. <laughs> <laughs> I hit launch. And it like, takes forever. It's just like doing something. And then I look away for a second. And I look back at my computer's blue screen and restarting. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so my computer comes back up like, oh, well, I didn't see what happened. So I have to launch the game again. It waited. And uh, it blue screens. I'm like, okay, what? And then it like disappears and reboots. Like, what the fuck just happened? Like, I can't see the error. It's like, all right, I got I to gotta see what it is. So I get my phone out to like take a picture of the error message. And like, <laughs> I hit launch. And then the game launches. I'm like, what the fuck? And, and then it downloads a, a four gigabyte patch. Just the once? <laughs> just once. It patches itself. The game relaunches. And then I can finally play it. And then, okay, so I played for a The game's actually fun. <laughs> After all that, <laughs> I had a blast playing the game. Um, I quit the game. So I'm, like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take a little break. I'm like, the game installed twice. I wonder if, like, all the installation files are still on my hard drive. Yeah. It still had all the installation files. So I had to go through, delete all the installation files. And I thought, is that going to make my game blue screen again now? So I was like, okay, now I have to relaunch the game and check again. It didn't. The game was fine. But I was like... How can I have this many problems? I just wanted to download and play a game. It, it, it took, I think, it was an hour between from when I decided I want to play Division Two until it was like I, I could finally play it. We we were trying to play a game called Satisfactory, which was on the Epic Store. It's a sandbox game. Yeah, you like automate a bunch of just like conveyor belts and shit. Yeah, and uh, I put put my information in. Well, I put Trevor's information in. Didn't it said the exact same thing, like it'll be refunded. Tried Jack's card, didn't work either. So I was like, sod it, I'll buy it on my personal card, because I know that works. Mm -hmm. That didn't work. <laughs> and uh, I tried on someone else's account, tried on Michael's username, that didn't work. So in the end, to get me in the game, Jack had to email the developer and ask for a code. <laughs> what? It was the only way I could get it. Oh that's, my god. I, I don't understand that that epic thing. It just doesn't ever work for me. This was on the Epic Store as well? Yep. I've, I've bought one other game on the Epic Store in the past. I bought Metro Exodus, and I did not have any issues with that. Is that game good? It's pretty good. It's, it's pretty fun. Might they have a, an interesting gun. They have a, a, there's like one gun in there that's a pneumatic gun. So it fires like little steel pellets. And anytime you use it, like you lose pressure. So every now and then it's like a BB gun. Every now and then you have to like pump it <laughs> to, to <laughs> like cool. make sure it has enough pressure. That way it does more damage because as it has less pressure, it does less damage. It's, and then as a result, since it's pneumatic, it's silent. So if you're like sneaking around and you want to take someone out without them knowing where you are, it's like, that's cool. It's, neat. it's a fun game. I recommend it. I never played any of the other ones. I didn't either. Oh, okay. I thought, uh, I, I, I was so impressed with their E3 presentation when they unveiled Metro Exodus. It's like, oh, I got to play that game. It's fun. Is Metro Exodus a game that's like about sneaking around or is it about being confrontational? You could do it either way. Okay. I liked, I like Sneaky Beaky. So yeah, yeah, I was sneaking. I was sneaking a lot in that game. I didn't. I, that was probably the, my uh, yeah. Um, finding it, it can be very <laughs> difficult to find ammo sometimes. So it is. A so bit of a... you you will be incented, but you can always if you're using the pneumatic gun, you can craft the the bullets for that. What was the name of the most recent Wolfenstein iteration? Uh, New Blood, Old Blood, Summon Colossus. Wolf I was thinking it was the Colossus one, wasn't it? Oh, maybe not. Maybe that was an old one. Anyways, that one I felt kind of leaned on you sneaking around more than I really wanted to. I really wanted to be a lot more aggressive and confrontational, but it felt like it was punishing me way more than usual. And like it, the, the, um, who are the people who can call more people? I don't know. But yeah, the, like the things that would run alarms and just yeah. have that kind of thing. Yeah. I felt like that. It was, <clears throat> I, maybe, maybe I was just trying to play it too much like doom, which doom is just run and gun and move around, never stop moving, never stop shooting that kind of thing. Um, and I kind of wanted that, as well, which is like, I just wanted to fuck up a bunch of Nazis, but I, I don't know, like, if, if, I guess if a game is meant to be sneaky, I'm fine, but I, that one, I, I, like, an FPS like that, I didn't like that that was how much it wanted me to do, like, it wanted me to do stealth kills a lot more and that kind of thing. I like, I like playing games with a stealth aspect and, like, kind of sneaking around. If like, that's part of the game, but this is, like, a FPS that is just a giant dude with a bunch of guns. Yeah, that's true. Like, like, there's a lot of stealthy in, like, the Assassin's Creed games that I like. Like, in Far Cry 3, I think that was the one that I really loved being all stealthy and, like, surveying, like, an enemy encampment and marking every enemy and, like, trying to wait till one gets far away and, like, take them out and just kind of, like, take as many people out as you can before they notice. I would love a new Splinter Cell game. Yeah. Are they even working on any more? It's been a while. What was the last one? 
Was the last one like Conviction? Got to have been years ago. There has to be one, one was after. Blacklist. Maybe Blacklist was after Conviction. Splinter Cell. That's Black, that's Blacklist was the reason I grenaded myself in <laughs> Rainbow Six Vegas that one time. Yeah, Blacklist was the last one. Uh, why was thirteen? Why was that game the reason? Because the button B was cover in Blacklist, and in <laughs> Vegas B was throw a grenade at the wall. <laughs> was that <laughs> when you did that? When you did that on in a in a let's play? Yeah, Jack almost died. That I remember that now. My yeah. dead body. <laughs> yep, Blacklist was in twenty thirteen, and Conviction was twenty ten. So Blacklist was the last one six years ago. So it, was it just not? Did it not do well? I loved those games. Bloody love them. I don't know very many other people who speak as highly about it as you do. Not I, that anybody, really, I like stealth games, though. Yeah, not that anybody ever, like I've ever man. heard anybody like trash those games, but I've no, it's just one of those franchises I've never personally run into a lot of gamers who are like, what you just said. When's another Splinter Cell game? That kind of thing. <laughs> I think maybe people have just forgotten about it. So I'm reading here, apparently, uh, at E3 in 2017, the Ubisoft CEO uh, responded to rumors about Splinter Cell, and his quote was, I can't say much about that, but for sure, all the Clancy games are getting taken care of. It's just we have quite a lot in our plate at the moment. All the Clancy games are coming are really coming along, so we are not forgetting Splinter Cell. Rainbow, I mean, Rainbow Six Siege is Tom Clancy. Yeah, Rainbow Six. Um, it seems like when you get kind of like a tentpole game like that, maybe there's less of a... I don't know. I don't know if they're connected at all. Like, if Siege is just such a big old... <laughs> Production, why would they spend too much time working on another Splinter Cell if they've got this? Maybe thing. because you can't get microtransactions in a Splinter Cell game easily. <laughs> I'm sure you can figure a way out, right? There, yeah, it's, <clears throat> it's so funny that that's part of the business model. I was even I was reading an article about like a recap of, I think it's been six months now with Red Dead. Um, and yes, it has, yeah, wow. And how like the drop off on Red Dead has been. Much more than they were ex they were hoping for. Like I'm sure with Red Dead, they were hoping it to be very similar to Grand Theft Auto. Of like, well, just the multiplayer just felt so so much smaller. Yeah, yeah I don't know GTA. anybody who like still plays Red Dead Online. No, I mean we could never really get too far ahead in videos just because there's not a lot to do. You have to do so much to get anything, and it's. I guess we just never explored it enough. Funhouse managed a few Red Dead Online <laughs> videos, and they were they were decent Funhouse videos, but you could tell that like. As far as content capabilities, it was much more limited in the, you know, the sandbox of a world that Grand Theft Auto's turned into. I, I, I'm telling you, I feel like they really missed out. I thought for sure when Red Dead came out that they would have <laughs> some kind of multiplayer game, like maybe even a Battle Royale mode where you chase a train. Like the objective in the Battle Royale game is to like hijack the train and take it over. <clears throat> so it's like your objective's moving the whole time. Yeah. And it's like 100 players all trying to converge on this objective that's moving. Yeah, so I'm not the circle moving around the train. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, yeah, and like the the, the circle's mobile, like and it yeah. gets tighter. You have to be closer and closer to the train as time goes on. I'm not vying for many other battle royale games, but a battle royale like at the pace and guns of Red Dead does sound a little interesting with horses and such. Mm -hmm. Red Dead made me such so much more patient for open world gaming because it just took so long to get anywhere that I just yeah. started just like walking around in first person and enjoying it. And now I feel like I could play. GTA again, but less rushed. Like I played the whole of GTA Five, like getting in cabs and skipping every journey, just because I wanted to, yeah, play the story. But now he, I'd probably drive everywhere. Has Andy ever talked to you about what his favorite thing to do with to do with GTA is? Was it just run people over? No, his favorite thing to do is to get in a car and follow the laws of traffic. <laughs> he's a bit of a freak. Though, he's he? a, he's a, Andy's got a few things that, are, that make him a bit of a freak. But that's one of them. It's like a Zen thing for him, just to get in a car and to. Drive around, but actually abide by traffic laws. He, he, like he has a real car, right? <laughs> like he can go do that if he wants. He can get in a car and drive and follow the traffic laws. I feel like video games are just flipped around. <laughs> yeah. The escapism of GTA Five, the whole of yeah. he, he San, drives San Andreas like a law-abiding citizen in GTA, and he murders the fuck out of people in real life. Like, <laughs> yeah, he says he'll do it for hours. Yeah, really? Is he like listening to something, or he might be, or he he's might not just driving? <laughs> he might be just driving. He, he really drives likes... home from work, and he's like, "I'll go for a <laughs> drive." <laughs> I, you know, I'm uh, I'm just making guesses at this point. Other than I do know that that is one of his things he likes to do. I feel like so GTA Five is like the most successful entertainment product of all time, right? Yeah, it's made the most money of anything that anyone has made to entertain. But they won't. Is that is that is that you coming to an assumption, or is that a definitive? I'm pretty fact? sure it's I'm pretty definitive. sure it is. I think yeah. it's made like billions and billions of dollars. It sounds totally plausible. I just didn't know. But it's still 1080p on Xbox. 
Like they don't they didn't do anything with the Xbox One X. Uh, GTA they? Five has generated over six billion dollars in revenue. And compare and, that to like it the, is it is one title, yeah, of something. And compare that to like the the biggest movie of all time, yeah. biggest box office. Well, I mean, Avatar. like the big thing about why they uh, all all that I'm thinking of is that the reason why they kept making Cars movies was that the first Cars movie made like a billion dollars in merchandise, but that's six times that with just again one product. Yeah, it's not well. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if you can include if it does be like a different franchise and all of their merch. I don't know. I assume they're just making that on the game. So just like in, in like the actual game purchase, yeah. So I found this uh <clears throat> this article talking about how GTA 5 is the most profitable um thing ever or entertainment <laughs> product ever. And uh it's it's a it's a market watch article and they compare GTA 5, which like I said, six billion dollars. To Avatar, which grossed two point eight billion dollars, but the uh, the title for this article on their website is "This Violent Video Game Has Made More Money Than Any uh, Movie Ever." Oh it's fuck like, off! Why you got Why you got to phrase it that way? With this God. violent video. Like, <laughs> yeah, fuck off, Max like, Cherney. But wouldn't it be cool if they if they like four K fied it or sixty FPS it for yeah. Xbox? Did something? Did anything? The six billion dollars. I mean, they'd still do a lot. They still um, work on the game all the time, which everyone appreciates. But it would be nice to have it match the quality of all the other games I'm playing right now. Yeah. Is PC does PC scale up? Yeah, PC's fine. Okay, so it's Xbox looks, still PC looks inch. phenomenal. Um, it's just Red Dead looks so good on Xbox. It was like so well optimized for the One X in 4K that I was I was like, why can't they just retro or rec on the older? Is there is there fake time? HDR though? Fake HDR. It's yeah. fake HDR. Is there a timeline for Red Dead going to PC? No. No. I don't think they've even confirmed. They've never said that it's even <clears throat> going to PC. Did they? But they do with the what they with GTA. They kind of did the same thing. They didn't confirm it. Came right. out it a lot just later. Kind of came out like two years later, I think. Yeah. I think it came out when like the one when the Xbox One and PS4 versions. came I out. I can't believe that Master Chief Collection is going to be on PC. It's not. I'm I can't. So I can't excited. imagine playing Halo Three on PC. That seems so weird to me. I don't know why. Funny enough, my first experience of Halo was playing Halo on a PC. You played the PC version of yeah. Halo? Yeah, because I didn't have an Xbox. Combat Evolved? Halo 1? Yeah. Oh. That was my first uh, Halo ever. And that came out much later, too. Yeah, because I didn't have an Xbox, and I didn't have any friends that had Xboxes. Um, I never had any friends, but <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole other problem. Uh, but I eventually was able to, I, I, like, I visited my uncle once, and they had an Xbox, and I got to play it on like their, like, the giant, what was the name of that controller? The Duke. The Duke. Um, yeah, and finished the game on that visit. Like, we played through the whole game on that visit. But, uh, yeah, my first experience was playing it. Like, it was, like, even just, like, a, uh, the first level uh, demo, essentially, wasn't it? As far as that, the Halo on PC. I don't remember. I didn't really ever play it on PC. Yeah, that's all it was. But, yeah, I, I mean, which, it's a FPS, and so I loved it that I, it was on PC. Did I play it? I mean, I know we filmed a bunch of, you know, we had to refilm a bunch of Red vs. Blue in the PC version. I don't know. Almost all of it. Yeah, I don't. I'm first print the whole fucking thing. It, so I don't think I ever. I don't think I ever played it just because we had to refilm <coughs> stuff we had already done. I was like, oh my god, we have to redo. All I remember this, buying it. All this fucking years of work over again. You know, it's time to do it again for 4K. Right? No, <laughs> fuck that. <Do> it. <laughs> Wait, no. I wouldn't have to do it this time. Yeah, yeah, yeah I should definitely know. do it. I don't know why you're getting all worked yeah, up about it. I don't have to do that anymore. I mean, jo Joel did a lot of it. I did some of season two. Oh my god, dude. it was like reshooting, shot for shot, like. I was making cuts on the exact frame of the old cut and like making the sh it was like it was almost frame perfect remake. Well, you, you had yeah. to get it pretty close with because the audio didn't change. It was just you had to match it right. to what was happening. It was really fun to do as a fan of Red vs. Blue. It was fun to be making the exact same episodes that I used to watch. <laughs> yeah, I really liked it. Everyone else hated it. <laughs> Fucking lunatic. <laughs> <laughs> we were all there the first it's, time. Just Gavin. I, mean, we, just I feel the same way. Like, I was talking to Jeremy the other day. And because I, Jeff and I built almost everything in Achievement City, Jeremy was like, yeah, I did it as well. I just built it like, I watched your videos and I rebuilt it myself. And I was like, you're a lunatic. <laughs> I felt the same way. I was like, I would hate to do that there's again. There's no way he's the only person who ever did that, though. Because there's multiple no, people I know, that, yeah. that recreated Achievement City. Yeah, he was pretty passionate about did it. Did he do it in Xbox? I think so. I, it, it might not have been every single thing in Achievement City, but still, big, the big builds were like, that's were still That's still completely mental if he did that. In Xbox, yeah, because even you guys doing an Xbox is the most absurd thing I've ever heard of. Yeah, well, but... our early builds didn't have creative mode. Yeah, that you we guys, like... you guys uh, were like uh, exploiting glitches. Yeah, we found out how to du duplicate stuff because 
I mean, to to actually build the achievement hunter logo in the ground in wool. Yeah. I don't know how many sheep we would have had to have sheared for that. Maybe like close to a thousand sheep. Yeah, but I mean, even just like even just the Tower of Pimps in construction is an ordeal because of how much gold. Yeah. Just to construct, what is it? Four blocks of gold. Yeah. Like that. Just that <laughs> is an annoying thing to go grind and find. Find and grind. I like that. Yeah, that's a dating app I haven't uh, gotten on yet. <laughs> Finding. <laughs> <laughs> We're trademarking that. That's ours. You can't have it. Um, yeah, you're speaking of which, let me read this here. Uh, a reminder, this episode of the Receipt Podcast <laughs> is brought to you by Stamps.com. One of the toughest parts of uh, making and selling products online is the shipping. No one really has time to go to the post office. You're busy. Uh, who's got time for all the traffic, parking, lugging your mail and packages? It's a real hassle. And that's why you need Stamps.com. Stamps.com brings all of the amazing services of the U.S. Postal Service right to your computer. Stamps.com is the fastest and more convenient way to get postage. You can use your computer to print official U.S. postage for any letter, any package, any class of mail, anywhere you want to send, and the mail carrier picks it up. So no more lugging to the post office. It's awesome. Uh, there's no equipment to lease, no long-term commitments. This is a must-have for any small business. Uh, I use stamps.com because I love how easy it is. Don't have to take time out of my day to plan for a trip to the post office. I can just get official postage right from my own computer. And with stamps.com, you get five cents off every first-class stamp and up to 40% off of priority mail. Uh, right now, our listeners get a special offer that includes a four-week <laughs> trial plus free <laughs> postage and a digital scale without any long-term commitment. You can see for yourself why over 700,000 small businesses use Stamps.com. Just go to Stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in Rooster. That's Stamps.com. Enter code Rooster. Thank you, Stamps.com, for sponsoring this episode of the Rooster Teeth Podcast. Stamps.com. It's, it's stamp. special. I said one word wrong. <laughs> that was funny. That wasn't it? I, I misspeak every now and then. Um... I remembered a story I wanted to tell you. Ooh, I like stories. Can I tell you a story? Um, you have was, a good uh, hairline. Huh? Sorry, carry on. <laughs> what did you say? You have a really good hairline. I have a really good hairline? Strong. Yeah. I appreciate it. Continue. I've got a lot of friends who are dealing with... Uh, with the so, recession yeah, of the head? Yeah, the recession of the head. Yeah. Um, <laughs> how's yours? Is yours a good, good hairline? You you got a lot of flop. Yeah, you got a strong hairline. So I guess thinner. I don't know. You got you got some cul-de-sacs happening. <laughs> yeah. um, it's more the gray I'm worried about. Worried. Really, gray's awesome. Why? Does gray that make you feel old? Yeah. I mean, I I completely echo. I I don't like my gray hairs very much either. Um, but Can we get a sponsor for that. What's that stuff? Like hair some shit. kind of hair dye. <laughs> it's yeah. just called dye. Hair dye. <laughs> What's that stuff? <laughs> hair dye. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, but there's stuff for like covering up gray hair in there. It's called dye. It's not hair dye. <laughs> yeah, but it's like actual products that are like, this is for old dudes. You mean hair dye? Just for men? <laughs> I mean, you're just talking about hair dye, dude. You're talking about just for men? That was it. I was just trying to remember the oh, name of the brand. There, when I was in Korea, there's like, <laughs> you can, there's like there's all these kiosks everywhere in the street there where you can get your shoes shined and your hair dyed at the same time. It's like so the same so, product. Sometimes you'd see like dudes like sitting there with their like suit jacket off with like a bib around them and like their hair. Covered in dye, and they're just waiting for it to dry. Do you think it's the same dye for both? It might be. <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry. You have a story. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I got distracted by hairline talk. Um, no, I had maybe one of the most, like, adventurous and scary moments ever in a in a lift. Uh, a few weeks ago when I was in Los Angeles visiting Funhouse, I extended my trip uh, an extra day nice so that Gavin fun. could burp. <laughs> I extended my trip an extra day so that I could go to Disneyland. And... I had asked a few people if they wanted to go, like a few people from Funhouse, like John Smith and James and Elise and that kind of thing. Um, but everyone had like gone to recently and didn't want to spend the money again to go because Disneyland is an it's expensive. It's, it's, it's how much like, does it cost? Like two parks. Like if you want to go to both parks in one day, it was I think a hundred and fifty, maybe close to two hundred dollars. Um, no wonder they could afford Marvel. Yeah, like one <laughs> one ticket to one park, I believe, is at least like ninety nine dollars, something like that. Um, and so if you add on, like, if you want the fast pass thing to be able to do on your phone, that's an extra, like, 15 bucks and that kind of thing. So it adds up, and I think it's, like, $200. But so I was staying at a hotel near Funhouse uh, in, where is it? Is Culver City is mm -hmm. where they're at. And so I had to make it to, An to Anaheim to get to Disneyland. And so I got a, a lift to take me there. And I don't know if you're like me at all, but all I ever want from a lift is for them to say hi when I get in the car, confirm my location, and then don't talk to me ever again. And can we just... 
get to my location without interacting very much. That is correct, yes. Is that, is, is that the correct want, yeah. way for people to yeah. do it? Um, most do, drivers, I feel, do not get that memo. Depending on the day you go, a single park pass is either $104 or $129. Yeah. So um, I just wanted to clarify. It's a bit much. Uh, but so, yeah, that's why. So it was, it was understandable that they, they just couldn't make it happen. Um, and so <clears> I <throat> managed, I, I, I got a pretty good Lyft driver who's actually pretty quiet for the most of the way. And it was a long drive. It was at least like 30 plus minutes to get there. Um, and I'm an old man. And so I get up early and I like getting to stuff early. And so I was, I, got my ass up super early and was going to get there before the park opened because if you get there before the park opened, you can get in right when it opens. And like it's, first in line. Yeah, and it's usually way... Are you on your own at this point? I was I was going to Disneyland by myself. So I was, I was going to... But I was, I was very excited about going by myself because as much as I like go into stuff like that with a group of people, when you go by yourself, you have so much more control over your day and that yeah. bodes well with my OCD brain. Absolutely. Huh. Um, so like... For instance, I could go. I could get any fast pass I wanted. Didn't have to have a group consensus. Right. I went on single rider lines on all kinds of stuff. I didn't really like do anything I didn't want. I didn't wait in long lines at all all day long. It was fantastic. So again, old man that gets up super early without even an alarm anymore. I did that. Got up super early. Wanted to get the park before it opened. Managed to do that. And so we pull into the parking structure. Have you been to Disneyland and in? In California, ever? I've been once, yeah. Okay. Do you know the giant parking structure that you have to go to? Yeah. Or did you, so that's where you have to go no matter what. When if you're um, actually, that's what we thought you had to go no matter what. And so the Lyft driver pulls in, and it, to paint you a picture, it's like 10 lanes lined up that are feeding into this giant concrete structure. And so we pull in, and there's already a line of cars outside pulling out of the parking structure where the the tickets uh, you know people are inside the parking structure and so we're in the furthest lane to the right so it's it's us and the curb and then like nine Bunch more of lanes of cars and it's filling up and there's cars all to the left of us and there's cars starting to fill up behind us and so we're like okay we have to wait in line we'll start moving forward and we'll we'll get through into the parking structure and then we'll end this thing we don't move for a while and we're parked there for quite a while. Again, I'm in a lift. And as it like, takes a few minutes and we realize we haven't moved at all. Not even like no one has moved forward even one space as though the people are taking, you know, tickets. So I was like, I start freaking out and I think, what time does the parking structure open? And so I look it up and the parking structure doesn't open until like, I think it was like a half an hour before the park. We got there an hour before the park opened. And so we, I'm sitting in a lift car and a lift car, a lift car. And there is a half an hour until these cars start moving. And we are, we have cars behind us and to the side of us and in front of us, we are stuck there. Can you just get out? Well, that's what I thought I could do, but I'd be literally leaving this guy <laughs> stuck <laughs> in just a, a, like a, he can't go get another ride. Oh, yeah. He can't do anything. So that's the thing is that if I was just in my car, yeah, I would just wait it out. I'd be like a half an hour. Okay. I'll pull up a show to watch on my phone and just kill the time but i'm in i'm in this guy's business i'm in a guy's business and i can't running. just i can't just tuck and roll and then just leave the dude well you could it's not like you have to pay him yeah but i think he'd give me a bad rating you know i think that would affect <laughs> he, he trapped me <laughs> <laughs> so i'm freaking out because we are stuck even if i if i even if i were to leave he'd be stuck and he starts realizing this so we're trying to problem solve oh my God. what to do and again i'm someone who's very prone to social anxiety and i'm very John, much i'm cringing <laughs> I don't want to 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 you know hinder anybody at all. Yeah. And so I'm just trying to figure out something. And so we have an epiphany that we look to the right of us and it's the curb, but there's a little bit of space. Oh no. And so we start thinking, like we're both thinking on the same wavelength and no one's saying it out loud, but he's like, Do you think I could get into that space and back out of this because we got cars behind us and i was like you might be able to fit oh my God. i'm not going to tell you to do this but you might be able to so he's like should we try this <laughs> and i'm like this is really up to you at this point i'm really sorry i'm if i had any other solutions how to solve this i would but you do you so sure enough he pulls over into basically the the gutter right before it gets to the curb and starts slowly backing up. And there's cars coming in and still filling up. So he's in the hard shoulder of parking. He's in the hard shoulder and there's <laughs> and, like... And they probably filled in that space. Like yeah. he has to commit to it. Yeah. And so, oh yeah, once he pulls out, cars <laughs> move forward and we are now in this thing. So he starts backing up further and further. And I've, I'm torn between looking back 
and watching what's happening or just keeping my eyes to the ground and waiting for this madness to end and seeing how this figures out. Because again, I'm dying inside this entire time. And so we slowly, slowly backing out as all these cars just watching this one car like Mr. Bean style yeah. back out of this, this lane. Sure enough, we get all the way back to where there are no more cars and we are free to go except for the fact that we are in a one-way lane that is 10 lanes long that we can't just do a U-turn and get out of. So we then have to cross like 10 lanes you know, diagonally and go through like these orange cones that he just kind of squeezes through to get to the other one-way lane and gets out of it. He somehow fucking manages it, gets us turned around and starts leaving the parking area. And he is freaking out. He's like, that's the coolest fucking thing I've ever done, man. <laughs> he's like, he's like, we were here, man. We were doing this together. It's you and me, John. And I was like, yeah, we totally did it. I'm so glad. He's like, oh man, God. that is awesome. I'm going to tell my friends, friends about that tonight. I was like, and then cool. you're like, want to go to Disneyland? Let's go with some rides. <laughs> and then we became best friends and, and he moved in with me. No, yeah. <laughs> um, he, we managed to find out where the lift drop off is and he, and he let me go. Um, and Why yet, did you so want to get that? question? Why were you going to the parking structure? Because were you going to park? Was he going to go with you? When you put in the location of Disneyland, that's where it sent him. It, it, like it's just the, the his app, his you know his Lyft driver's app sent him Isn't there. That signage. Um, that's what I'm wondering. That's funny enough is there isn't. And actually, you have to go all the way to the other part of the park, which is the downtown Disney section, which is the shopping area. And there is a taxi and lift drop off at the end Has of that Has he never there. dropped someone off at Disney before? I guess he hadn't. I mean, again, he picked me up in Culver City, so it's probably not too common of a <laughs> destination for him. But, um, yeah. And so, yeah, he dropped me off and I got off and I immediately, like, tipped him. So, like, yeah, regardless like of whether bucks. or not you had ditched the guy in the line. You still ditched him in Anaheim. <laughs> yeah, I mean... <laughs> like an hour and a half away from home. But that's anytime anybody takes that kind of stuff. Like, I mean, I've gotten... Like, when we went to San Francisco for a kind of funny prom, like, the, the airport and where, like, downtown San Francisco is, is an hour drive. And so we had someone pick us up from there. So, I mean, even, the, even when we went to London and did the did London RTX, like... To be picked up at Heathrow and then taken to where we were. Well, I mean, when they're picking people up at Heathrow, they expect that. Well, I when they pick I, a random person up in the middle of LA and they're like, "He saw it was Disneyland." Not, he they, saw. You know, they just accept, and then they're like, "Oh fuck." He was fine. He was he was not upset about that, and he was. Actually, then he's picking up people in Anaheim. We're just going around there. He was very excited about uh, about the adventure that we had. Man, the, I mean, like the the only thing I have that's anywhere near that is one time when I was in Sydney for RTX Sydney, I was out doing press for the event and I think we were, I was out near uh, Bondi Beach and I had to take a taxi was it no I had to take an Uber from there back to the CBD downtown okay and the Uber I got into or maybe it was a Lyft they were like oh man you're going to the CBD I never drive to the CBD I just normally drive out here in the suburbs and, he, like, and the guy got really nervous and was really freaked out that he had to drive into the city did he drive you into the city eventually yes Wait, what's eventually? We ended up getting on the Harbor Bridge three times. Uh, <laughs> That's so funny. I had, I had the same. I had to take his GPS away from him. I had to be like, "You're not looking at this anymore." I had the same issue, and this is in Sydney. Yeah, I had a guy that where I had. I swear. Now you're validating my opinion. I think almost half if not all of the like the drivers that are driving like Ubers or Lyft out in Sydney that's the first time they've ever been in the city because there was multiple times that people were just freaking me out a dude got on the harbor bridge when he didn't need to and took me across when we like my location was back yeah on that same trip he also went down the wrong way on a one way street and like i saw cars coming at us <laughs> I'm not trying to generalize all of Australian like uh, Uber drivers, but I kind of am. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I had to. Uh, I, I definitely requested. A, I remember now it was Uber. I requested a refund for that trip in the app. Yeah. I, was, I was like, you can look at the map. I was like, look at what happened. That's not, there's no, that's not right at all. I've had Uber trips where they'll just say that I got in and they'll just piss off for like an hour and a half and I'm paying for it the whole no. time. No. Yeah. Really? Yeah. You ever, you ever gotten accepted by an Uber driver and then like on their way to you, they, they cancel on you? Oh, yeah, all the time. I take that very personal. That happens, all, that happens all the time in New York, where they just accept it, then it takes forever, then you have to cancel it, and they make five bucks or whatever. That's like a blind date, pulling up and seeing you, and then not doing the date. I've also had times where I've been staying at, like, a double tree right by LAX, just for, like, quickly coming in for work sure. and quickly want to leave. 
but I have all the phantoms and shit. I have like five cases with me. Yeah, yeah. And I, I called an Uber twice in a row. The guy was like, it's too short of a trip. You got to get the shuttle. And I was like, I don't lug all this like really expensive gear. Yeah. Same dude or, or multiple drivers? Two different drivers on two different times. But I was just like, I don't know why they don't want to do it. I mean, I can tip you. I can tip you more. I just don't want to get the shuttle with all that sh with all that stuff. There's also like a default amount of money you have to pay for an Uber. Yeah, I don't see the big but deal. But it's only like a few dollars. I think the big deal is that once they're, you know, stuck in that ring of LAX, yeah. that it, it takes it's, ages to get out. It's like John in the fucking yeah. in Disney. But it's well annoying. So, um, Emily was just slacking me. I guess I had some mail over there in the in the mail collection spot. What is it? It's addressed. It's two pieces of mail <gasps> that are both addressed <laughs> to Doctor Gustavo Sorolla, DDS. <laughs> so uh, you can call me Doctor Sorolla now if you want. <laughs> That's not even like just like Doctor. Well, you can't they open it. That's for Doctor Sorolla. They 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 picked your specific like practice. Dear, dear Doctor Sorolla, if you're like most dentists in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, because of rooster teeth. Because of rooster teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see this other one. <laughs> oh my god. So, We're all dentists. Yay! <laughs> so this other one is... Dr. Sorolla, I hope your practice is doing great. <laughs> <laughs> Weird, uh, he's, he's a dentist, but he has 400 employees. <laughs> why, why did we... Why did I get two of them from two different places on the same day? That's pretty cool. You're on a list now, bro. How can you use this to a your dentist advantage? guide to making smart business decisions? Can you like get access to like some wholesale dentistry equipment or something? Can I get some nitrous oxide? Can we just turn one of the conference rooms into just a dental practice, just so we <laughs> actually are a dentist as well? What? Why? I mean, where did that come from? That's good. <laughs> it's been 16 years. I've never had that happen. Well, because you read it out on a podcast, now it's getting happen. ready for 16 more years of dentistry. Jesus. How long does it take to become a dentist? 16 years? Two weeks. <laughs> I s Why do I ask questions? <laughs> how am I supposed to know how long it takes to become a dentist? It's probably like uh -huh. a... Hey, Gavin, how long does it take to become a pilot? Nine years. See, you're just making up shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, see, how long does it take to become a... Dental school takes four years to complete at full-time status. So those who complete a bachelor's degree first will be in school for eight years. Uh, yep. What about pilot? <laughs> I take to become. I'm just your Google. Uh, the, uh, so they're talking about airline pilot. The time yeah. it takes to move on to an airline yeah. after you complete professional pilot training program, most people gain the required 1,500 hours. You have to have 1,500 hours of flight time, but that's on top of the professional pilot training program, which I don't know how long that is because that's not here. 1,500 hours. Mm -hmm. That's a decent amount of time. So yep. if you fly 40 hours a week, like a full-time job, which you're not flying 40 hours a week, that's uh, 37.5 weeks. So, you know, three quarters of a year. If you fly. Just nonstop. 40 hours <laughs> a week, like a full-time job. That's a lot. I'm glad it takes a lot. Uh, you you want to make sure those people are, are well-trained. Yeah, I don't, I don't want uh, shortcut pilots. Mm -mm. I want real ones. I wonder what is the longest... Amount of time it takes to get a job, like what job it is. What job requires? Probably some kind of surgeon of some kind, right? What's a or to cut sushi at Jiro's? Place. That's what I was about to say. I was about to say Jiro. Like his son had been like he did ten years of eggs. <laughs> well, his it? son had also been his like a, his his for like thirty or forty years. For like yeah, I rewatched that recently a couple months it's ago. It's good. Does it hold up. Yeah, it's good. You never ate that, did you? No, I tried this last time I went to Japan. I really I tried so hard, and I uh, just couldn't make it happen. So is it just you can't get a you can't get a reservation? Mm -mm. Like they they won't you ha you if you're not in Japan you can't make a reservation. You have to have someone in Japan make the reservation for you. So you could just uh, like f hire someone in Japan to make a reservation. That's what I tried. Really? <laughs> well, not hired, but I I got a friend. I, I tried to have the uh, concierge at the hotel I was staying make the reservation on my behalf. Didn't work. Did not work. Wow. They know that game. Yep. They're too smart for you. I've yeah. been, I've been trying to <clears throat> cook almost exclusively Japanese for like about a week and a half now. I've just kind of gotten into my head that I think Japanese have figured out the healthiest cuisine, like rice and stuff. Yeah, and lots, lots of vegetables and and that kind of thing. And 
because I just, I mean, Japanese people, I feel like live forever and are generally the healthiest. And so I'm just trying that out. It's they actually drink a lot and smoke a lot. <laughs> Do they? Yeah. What you like, like, like there a lot of a, alcohol and a lot of smoking? There is a lot yeah. of smoking in, yeah, in Japan. That's so I wouldn't say the healthiest lifestyle, but yeah, they eat pretty healthy. I did not know about the smoking problem. I don't smoke, so I'm gonna be the. You the, better start. I better start. If you really, if you're really gonna embrace this, no, I'm go good. all in. I mean, it's it might, just, it might be no more than us. people who smoke here, but I just noticed a ton of smoking. It's it's that. also just a. Uh, it, I hate vegetables, but vegetables are the key to like any proper dieting, as far as like filling up the majority of your food with it and cooking with Japanese vegetables and that kind of thing, and the way they adding the flavors they do, I like that better. And so it tricks me into eating a lot more vegetables. So as of 2015 in the United States, 15.1% of U.S. adults smoke. 15. That's a, that's a lot. Of, in, that's millions. In 2015, <clears throat> the adult smoking rate in Japan was 19.3. So more. So definitely more, but not Not crazy, like 30%, yeah, something like that. Not more. Um, yeah, it's a lot more men than women in Japan. It's... Uh, 29.7% of Japanese men, 9.7% of women versus the U.S., which is 16.7% of men and 13.6% of women. I don't think I know anyone who smokes anymore. We got several people here. Chad. And vaping counts, right? Yeah. Does vaping count? Yeah. It's it's a replacement. to. <laughs> uh, but so you mean specifically, do you not know anybody more who smokes cigarettes? Yeah. Cigarettes. Who smokes cigarettes? Someone here has to smoke cigarettes, right? Someone totally has Someone to. Someone smoked? I see some nodding. I was, we got a lot of vapes is what we have. I mean, even in, in our office. I mean, can you vape up your ass? Let's ask Chad. <laughs> if we say vape one more time, he's going to show up. Because wait. <laughs> say vape three times. <laughs> can you... Vaping, vaping, vaping. Can you suck with your ass? Yeah. Can you? No, I'm is not... That, is not, that our title? No. Hasn't I, that already been a you, title of a podcast? You, <laughs> you said yeah really quickly, but I want to know, Gavin, could you, if like gun pointed to your head, could you suck with your ass? Yeah, if I got uh, the right angle on all fours, <laughs> I would intake air. So you think on all fours, you, if you arch your back the right way, Bruce can do it too. We've talked about it. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think this, I know you could like, you could swallow liquids with your ass. If you can swallow, why can't you breathe? Because liquid is has a has a has a gravity that's helping it. Through a sealed sphincter? I don't think it's gravity. I think that's like That's a... just opening your sphincter though. You can open your sphincter. But but the act of opening it, if it creates like a <laughs> internal cavity, you've got to fill it with air from somewhere. <laughs> Do you think you're gonna you think that there is a vacuum that when you open your sphincter <laughs> There is a vacuum inside of you. Well, it's not like a, a, like a pressure chamber with a vacuum. It's just like it's like this, and then <laughs> I don't think you can. I think get on all fours. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm not. This is not for can, me to prove. Eric, can you show us that here without showing it to stream? Uh, yeah. No, I don't want to see you with a video with an ass that's sucking air. What are you gonna show? Is this not safe for work? We're at work, Eric. <laughs> what are, What are you doing? I'm covering monitors. It's not bad. How not, <laughs> how not bad on a scale from... Yeah, I, Eric is bad. On a scale on of... On a scale of goat Eric eating. is bad. Yeah, what... what uh, no, 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 it's it. not bad. On a scale of one to ten, one being... I don't trust you either anymore. A children's TV show and ten being... Mr. Hands? Mr. Hands. It's like a three. Oh. I'm... We're working on getting it. Fuck you. Gonna be a fuck you. It's only a three second I just... I don't need oh, to be scarred. a bit worse, actually, that it's only it's four three seconds. Se so is it an a, anus? Shorter than a vine. <laughs> is it someone inhaling helium? Uh, no, not helium. Or, 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 if you suck helium, what else do you fuck? I need you to describe this video. <laughs> you no, no, you don't have to. You can just watch it. <laughs> yeah, we, we're, gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna have Dennis me. bring it up. We'll show you guys. <laughs> Why wouldn't you show it to What's everyone? What's the title? Uh, the title is. Put it in the link. Dumb. Right, can, can we show your it to him? Him? <laughs> yeah, he did it. I told you it's not bad, right? That's actually really good. <laughs> I need to see the five seconds before that. That's just the exhale. Well, how else would he have got it up there? Uh, but that's what I want to see. 
You think he had a you think someone blew of it? smoke? Someone blew it in there? Maybe. God. But that's the thing we're trying to, we're not, I'm, I know how that air can escape an anus. I want to see if an anus can pull. <laughs> if an anus can pull. <laughs> Alright, we don't have to it's keep watching this loop. guy. It's, I mean, it's, it's <laughs> looped like 20 times. We've watched this man's butt exhale <laughs> vape like 50 times. That, I think you can show that on the stream. Just, no, there's a butt, there's a butt. You can't show crack. But that's, that's well, on just, YouTube. Just, just don't put it on YouTube. This is on our site. I, I, oh. I sent it in chat. I sent them the link. Okay. So if they want to, they can click it. They get another perk of being a first member. What? <laughs> uh, is this going to be an extra life thing or are you going to try to get someone's ass to vape? I mean, it's, it's brave of you to volunteer like that. I don't think I have that rectal control. Well, you got time to train. Can you fart? Yes. Then just do it and do it backwards. <laughs> it's like the slow down sound effect. Just reverse it. Now shut up. That's not how body functions work. Okay. Hey, Gavin, can I ask a question? Yep. Gavin, can can you come? <laughs> can you? Uh, Gavin, answer my question. Can, can Gavin, answer that's my question. It's like toothpaste. Now, can you, you can't <laughs> get it back in the tube, John. Oh, that's an interesting. But that's what I'm analogy. saying is that you could fart, but I can't pull the fart back in. I'm not saying collect the fart and suck <laughs> specifically that back in. I'm saying air. I can put air in a toothpaste tube and blow in it. All right? Here's what you do. Here's the instructions. All fours, sort of arch your back a little, and make and do the muscle that, that snips the poo. The sphincter. That's the sphincter. Yeah, snip the poo. And I think you'll just suck in a little bubble. How much you pay me if I, if I manage to vape? With my ass. <laughs> well, we'll see how much money it raises for the no, kids. We're I want about, money from no, Gavin. No, we're talking about charity. Uh, a I charitable want money from endeavor. Gavin on the table. I will pay you a hundred dollars. A hundred? That's it? Oh, come on, what, do you, what am I getting out of this? You're getting to see. I already saw the clip. It's gonna look just like that. I gotta get someone to let me use their vape pen. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, buy him a vape. <laughs> we can cut a little hole in your trousers. <laughs> So that you wouldn't have to show any. I appreciate that. Some modesty. Yeah, hundred dollars, hundred and fifty, hundred and fifty. Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> All right. Gavin and John make a deal. RT podcast. There you go. That's the title. <laughs> <laughs> With that screenshot, them shaking. <laughs> Nailed it. I got work to do. That's like, that's one day I can't go to Disneyland. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Uh, afterwards, that's what you got to say. When he hands you the $150, say, look, turn to camera and go, I'm going to Disneyland. <laughs> <laughs> she is get sponsored. <laughs> she is Disneyland. <laughs> oh, Fuck God. no. To get Disneyland paid for just a really cool rectal trick, that's fucking top. See if you can blow a ring. You said if I can inhale with my anus. How can you blow a ring? It's hard to blow a ring with your fucking mouth. You need, you need a tongue for that. You need a tongue to blow a ring? No, you need, like, you need lip control. So with hemorrhoids, you could blow a ring. <laughs> Yuck, 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 I yuck, can do yuck, it. yuck, yuck, New topic, new topic. Someone has, f <sighs> must have fought in a ring. Like, and you don't know because yeah, the fart's it's, invisible? Yeah, invisible, but there must have been like, <laughs> like a vortex. Someone has farted in a ring. <laughs> oh my god. I mean, dolphins can make rings with their blowholes. And that's just a, that's just a hole. There's no sphincter on a dolphin hole, is there though? <laughs> Isn't it just a wide hole? No, there's gotta be something because otherwise water would get in. <laughs> there, well, yeah, there's there is a I mean, what does get in? There, no, but that's how they yeah, breathe. They, they have they have control, right? Because it can close, right? Yeah, can it close? Yeah, or is it just that <laughs> they're under not it. just filling up with water constantly, right? But if I go underwater with my mouth open, looking up, I don't think water would go down my lungs because you have you have air throat in there. control, or is it just because it's air? Oh, because air would float out, wouldn't it? Right. <laughs> it's almost like air does that. <laughs> uh, you're right. I am right. Yeah. So they close their hole. Yeah. Yeah. They can close their hole. So they have they have muscle control. Is the sphincter on the top of you the can hole see it. or the like, bottom? You can see it. It's on the top. But they don't have anything in there other than the sphincter. So they and they make that looks more like a valve. they make rings. So you can make a you can make a ring with your anus. And it looks so gross almost like that. <laughs> like uh, cropped in images yeah. of the dolphin the bowl. I want to see that blow the hole. <laughs> it's a little much. Can a dolphin vape? <laughs> <laughs> oh, a hundred percent. Some fuckers already had a, a dolphin a vape. Dolphin. <laughs> a can a dolphin can doesn't it. autocomplete? Can a dolphin's anus vape? Oh, they did it from its mouth. Wait. They're, they're, 
Wait. It's chewing it from its mouth. Oh. It's blowing mouth rings? <laughs> I thought they did it from their blowhole. What? Why is the dolphin sucking air from a pipe? It's, it's vaping. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you just put vape in that. You get a dolphin vaping. Why is- why did the- why? That's the coolest thing. I want to film that. So, a dolphin so, someone wrote here, vaping. Mason215 dolph in uh, chat wrote new slow-mo guys video. I would film the crap out of that. That'd a, be awesome. Like a, a- what was that? What kind of dolphin is that? Like a beluga? Not a whale. It is a whale. What? I don't, I don't know. I can't read that. Anyways, yeah. <sighs> that was so cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Why didn't they do that on planet Earth? I man, I would love to get an alternative commentary track of Planet Earth with you. Well, they did the thing where Snoop Dogg was doing it. Yeah, right? but I want you. Oh, I can't. I wouldn't be any. I mean, I, I'm Amber's got it. You mean there's the things I would say? Yeah. Hmm. Because it would still like it would be close enough to people would be like, oh yeah, it's this other like it's a British you know bloke who's you know talking about his animals, but you just describing what's happening. Yeah, I would. I would do it. Can we do can we do like an alternative like a uh, uh, like a riff track yeah. of Planet Earth? <laughs> Extra with life you? Uh, stretch goal. I'll do I'll I'll do it with you so while you you're blowing see, vape out. While your I'm asshole. blowing vape out of my asshole. <laughs> you have kids though. Yeah, who cares? <laughs> I've like we like Michael has kids, and Michael has done far worse things than I have. He's not done anal stuff though. Has Michael done anal stuff here yet? I don't think he's any, ever done anus. That's a list that we need. Who here has done anal stuff for Rooster Teeth? <laughs> I mean, you've had your anus out in a video, but we just didn't show it really. Hey, yeah, but yeah. you didn't have your your like full on starfish showing. Oh, it wasn't showing. But I mean, it wasn't like it was in the room with camera. everyone. Though. Yeah, yeah I mean, it was. It was there. Blaine just had his ass shown in a short for or a, a thing for Arizona Circle. So we have butts Spoiler. out all the time. Blaine's butt is in Arizona Circle. Spoiler. It's a he's a featured player. It's a featured player. Uh, hey, I'm gonna read this. Uh, I want to remind everyone this episode of the Received Podcast is also brought to you by thezebra.com. If you get behind the wheel, you gotta have car insurance, and you could be paying too much. Some reports say that Americans are overpaying on car insurance by over 21 billion dollars. But searching for a better deal can take hours and typically just ends in getting unwanted spam calls. Until now, thanks to thezebra.com. TheZebra.com is the nation's leading car insurance comparison site. It's the only place where you can compare hundreds of policies from all the top carriers and choose the best for you. Plus, they will never sell you information to spammers, so you won't get all those unwanted calls or emails. You just answer a few questions on a simple, fast form, and they find you the best rates and coverages in your state. TechCrunch has called the Zebra Kayak for Auto Insurance. It's quick, it's easy, it's free. Just an honest way to compare car insurance quotes from all the top providers all at once. So go today and start saving at thezebra.com slash rooster. That's thezebra.com slash rooster. It's spelled out T-H-E-Z-E-B-R-A dot com slash rooster. Thezebra.com slash rooster. Uh, I talked about it recently. Uh, I went, I tried it out myself. Super fast. Just type in a little bit of info and you get quotes back instantly. You can see and you can just buy it straight through there. And uh, so thanks to the Zebra for sponsoring this episode of Rooster Teeth Podcast. Um, so I got, I got to talk about this. I saw this story the other day and it's been, it's been, I've been thinking about it a lot. There was a story I read in the New York Times about how scientists took brains pig from brains. a dead pig and partially brought them back to life. I didn't, I just only saw the headline. It was one of those headlines where I, I saw it a bunch. I just refused to read it. it but what was it about? It was, it was really long and the gist of it is... The brain was cellularly alive, but not functional. Does that mean it had like so electri like, like electrons they, they firing? Cells right, were moving, but there was they no had, brain activity. Right. They could restore blood Neurons. flow and they like injected drugs into it. And like the drugs were absorbed in the cells. The cells were all working like they should. But, you know, there was no higher brain function. So it couldn't think. Right. Like, damn, where's my body and face? Right. Or like, I thought I died. <laughs> Uh, but like so was the brain just on its own or was it in the pig still they I don't think they really elaborated on that I assume it was out Be dark and silent if but you actually yeah, started they, thinking they, they talk about it being like a Like a first step in trying to figure out like how to reanimate a brain I was like that just sounds like how you get zombies that just sounds like the beginning of a zombie movie where you're like why would they do that? That would never happen like no, no it's, it's happening. This is just the like the first like 
graphics card of like the timeline of things that led to the zombie apocalypse in the opening credits of the movie. Yeah. I guess it'd be useful if they could move, like do brain transplants that way. Where right. it's like you don't have to worry about keeping the brain alive. You just restart it in the new body. Right. And someone is pointing out an important uh, note that I should say, who's a uh, <laughs> night human, is that there was no coordinated electrical activity. So there was, you know, bits of electrical activity, but the brain wasn't, like, the electrical activity wasn't coordinated throughout the brain. So obviously what you're describing is, like, super, super, super early, early steps of this kind of an experimentation. Right, they could turn cells back on, but sure. they weren't necessarily working in a coordinated manner. So if they manner. did that to a human brain, it wouldn't be cruel? It, I, man. It's, it's like, such... <laughs> I don't like know. a moral like, landfill. Yeah, what if you donate like your field. brain to science? <laughs> oh, God. And your brain comes back. I feel like at this point, 2019, the brain should be the last thing. Like you should never donate that anymore. Well, that's yeah. like just the, in case you end up alive in like 40 years. What was the Netflix series Carbon? Uh, Alter Carbon. Alter Carbon, where they had like because people could just keep being brought back via the technology that's <coughs> in that show, but then certain people had clauses in their death that required you to legally not be able to bring them back. And that seems like that's like the progression. Yeah. Of like. You donate your brain, and people bring your brain back. It's like you need to have clauses that that doesn't happen. Let's just stop. Can we stop? Like, what if m further on from that, you could take two halves I mean, of two different brains and make like a bits. chimera brain? That'd be messed up. Yeah, I I think the the one I think about more, the one I, I I'm more interested in is digitizing the brain or like taking it and putting it. In computer storage somehow, yeah. So that you don't have to worry about like the biological aspect. Like put it in a Winra. <laughs> yeah, you, you zip your brain. <laughs> <laughs> Why'd you call that specific? <laughs> <laughs> brain compression. Okay, funny. brain compression. Sure. It's like what if like you, you don't ever compress your brain? Then like there's like bad side effects to compressing your brain. Lossless brain. Right. So when you actually when you get those chimera animals in nature, like the snake or something, and it's like, two, have you seen those? Where it's just like two snakes in one snake. No. It's not like a Siamese, it's not like two, it's like a, the DNA of two different snakes in one snake body. And, and usually it's like a, a line like right down the middle where you can clearly see that it's two different snakes. I've never seen this. But I wonder if they have two different brains also. No. Or whether it's, it's just the physical appearance of two snakes. It's just got to be some sort of physical abnormality. Like yeah, that's, out, outward. It's not like the one I've seen. I've, the one I've seen is like lengthways it's in half. But yeah, that's yeah, just it's really deciding, freakish. Like, the, like yeah, I, that doesn't seem like that's <clears throat> splitting of the the whole brain. Stop. Let's just all stop. Stop trying to splice things. Stop uh, trying to. That's very similar. So see the head there, where it's like a black snake on one side and a white snake on the other side. I mean, <sighs> I'm not sure what causes it, but I don't think it can happen. Is in that humans. a natural occurrence? Yeah, I think it's just a mutation. Okay, but so was the, the, I want to see an X Men with that mutation. <laughs> it's like two two people in one, no other power. Uh, I mean, there's been char characters that are like that. There was a character named Penance that was in Generation X, and she had her sister imprisoned with her in her brain. So there was two of them in the same body at the same time. I'm was, talking like the left half is one person, oh, and the oh, right no, half there's is there's never like person. that. I can't, well, there probably is, but I can't think of any. So either. one person would be, like, really creative. <laughs> <The other person. laughs> See, get on that. Let's make, let's make our own comic. There we go. We just invented our first superhero. Yeah, I'm sure it's a Useless superhero. person. <laughs> Useless person. And the other, and the second one can vape through their asshole. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> can you vape from both ends at once? Oh. Yeah. Yes. That's we're not getting any... on the topic of vaping no, no, we're through, we're done with that. through your penis. Um, I saw... Penis? That's no, no, I meant anus and mouth, dude. Oh. What are you, sicko? I went Jesus straight. Like there's, 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 there's... So when someone says, oh, you know, both ends, you think penis and anus. Sure, why not? <laughs> I saw something. Don't er judge me. I'm going to take your money. <laughs> yeah, you will. I saw something earlier today that kind of blew my mind. <clears throat> um, someone found, an, I don't know what it is. It's like a, an old toy or like an old eraser. Like, you know, how you get, you get like big erasers that sit on top of your pencil. Sure. When you're in school. It looks like that. And it's a Goomba. You know, a Nintendo Goomba, and it's got arms behind the its back. Arms. Was that like sanctioned merchandise? It has a stamp on it that says Nintendo. 
so the whole time they've just been shuffling around like this. Right, but, and then someone pointed out that in like <clears throat> Mario Party or in like Wii Sports and stuff, like they'll play sports and they still don't use their hands. Like yeah. You don't ever see their hands either, though. Like in Mario Party and stuff, you never see the hands. Right. I feel like that's just an early design choice. That there they, it is, if you want to see. Yeah, that's like an early design choice that they. They got ears. It's like part of its brow. Okay. They've got that was like early design choice that they phased out. It's kind of like Fat Pikachu. It's like we don't have Fat Pikachu anymore. We got the Pikachu we have now. Yeah, it's it's just weird to see that. But it's still that wild. was even an option. Yeah. At one point. That's that, crazy. Is that what do it does anyone know what's under a shy guy mask? Have they ever shown that? I don't think so. That's a good question. What if it's just a hideous shy burned guy mask? Guy what if it's like just the most beautiful like <laughs> face you've ever seen? What, what if, if it, it's the black hole picture that they just took? <laughs> <laughs> I see a lot of fan art. Of shy guys? Yeah. Well, yeah, people are gonna answer the question themselves. Oh, what is this? Um But that's like Again, going back to Pokemon, has anybody seen a Cubone without the skull on it? Because it's the skull of its mother is what is on a Cubone. But what's so, a Cubone look like without that? So, going back before we get to that. Or Diglett's feet. You can actually <laughs> see Shy Guy's face. What? In game? And so, apparently in GameCube's Mario Power Tennis, Shy Guy's mask falls off. And in the game, you see it from the back. You just see... Yeah, but then if you people modded the game and moved the camera, and that's oh. what you see if you move the camera. Oh, that's around. just like Master Chief's helmet under his helmet, though. Yeah, or that's like a. Did you see that video of? <laughs> that's funny. Of how the camera work looks like during the movement in <coughs> Fallout Four when you are revealed out of the vault and see the upper world for the first time. I don't like, think if, so. Like. Because the for some reason, like if you watch that video, like as the 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 person gets lifted up, if you watch from a, like a third person perspective, the head is snapped back and like totally behind the body, and the camera is like sitting for some reason above it. And so then you come up, and it's just like this misshapen <laughs> model that comes up and then snaps into you, and then you take over and that kind of thing. It was like it's like if you ever just again, if you move the camera on games when you weren't yeah. supposed to move the camera, you see. I've, I've seen some great ones from Firewatch like that too. Where it's like the main character's oh, really? arm will be all deformed and huge. Yeah. And it's like I love stuff like that. I, I, I watched a cool video about the way that Mario Kart 64 was actually just 2D sprites, but rendered to look like 3D, like all the Donkey Kong games. Hmm. Yeah. So you can actually only see certain angles of the character, but because it's all so fluid, it looks like they're 3D, looks 3D, even though it is just the same as, almost the exact same as Super Mario Kart on the Super Nintendo. Was it called Mario Kart? Super Mario Kart? Super, I think it was super. I think they did yeah, everything well, super. Well, yeah, but it's cool. It, 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 they look like totally different generations of games, but really, it's the same technology. Yeah, I'm, I'm double checking that <laughs> if it's Super Mario Kart. Because uh, you know, like yeah, Super Mario Kart on the Super Nintendo, Donkey Kong, they kind of looked 3D. But yeah, they, they were just Wait, like 3D rendering. Oh, 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 you mean like the Donkey like Kong game? Donkey yeah. Kong Country. Yeah, because they would actually model something in in 3D and then just take like a 2D picture of it. Yeah. So well, that's like, did 3D, you see, uh, did you see the, uh, the footage that someone <clears throat> put up there of the, like, the source, uh, footage of Mortal Kombat characters doing their stuff? Oh, like when they filmed the actual when live action? they filmed action? the actors. Yeah. Like the sprite people? Yeah. They, there's footage of that? Yeah, yeah. There's footage. They're, like, on this, like, grayish, uh, backdrop, and they're just on a set, and they're doing the movements and everything like that. It's so pretty... could someone then just take that and, like, re-sprite them, but at, like, a good frame rate? I suppose. Or, it depends on how good of quality the footage was. I think it was just video. on VHS. Uh, yeah, because yeah, it was, it does, it was, it was great. limited to the, te to the technology of the time. Oh, wow. But yeah. That's so well, that's cool. Not even, that's not even Mortal Kombat 1. Yeah, so here, yeah, I've got the Mortal Kombat 1 yeah, here. Yeah, th that's like, they're on a blue screen. The one that I saw, they're like on like... Yeah, yeah. that's really old. They're just in a room. Yeah, that's that's much more advanced. And that's like Mortal Kombat 2 or 3. But this is like... And you can see, it's like, oh yeah, that's... Yeah, I wonder if these some people of the knew how iconic that would be. That they define these characters that would be another game coming yeah. out tomorrow. That's so cool. Oh, well, speaking of stuff that's coming out this week, did you see that um, Samsung delayed their Galaxy Fold? I think it was supposed to come out on Friday. Oh, that's how soon it was? I thought these were like early, early products. It was supposed to be coming out on Friday uh, in the U.S. Is it because of the, they've the screens are breaking? Yeah, it's not. Like a lot. Well, yeah. I know that a lot of people have been trying to pull off the film. 
Because it's like a protective piece I of saw plastic. follow-ups of people going like, I didn't pull the film off, my my <clears throat> screen broke. Yeah, so they've- they, they've think... showed their testing of like the thing opening and closing like thousands of times without- I guess that, maybe like there, shit from the pocket thing, that, gets stuck in between. <laughs> maybe, right? Yeah, there like, was, there was, I saw a video of a guy who was trying to rebut all these people and he was saying like he got one and he filmed himself doing it a bunch of times wasn't breaking. He's like, yeah, yours didn't break, but these people did. And so with, with like a preview like this, you need to have near perfection as far as your launch goes to show off like this odd product. Especially if it's like a $2,000 product. <laughs> right. And so if you're going to send out a bunch of previews of it, it's like if, if like movies sent out a bunch of previews of their movies and like 50% of them just blacked out halfway through the movie. Like that's not how that works. You show off the perfect, perf like the exact way you want people to experience your product. It's cool though. It's a cool idea. It's super I mean, cool. I don't, I'm not sure I would, I, I don't really see the need for it. Yeah, I'm sure I will in 10 years when they're very common, but it's, it's just, cool I, that a company is, is so out there and like, we're gonna make it and just put it out. Yeah, I think it's it's like that first generation thing. Yeah. Where I think it's like, it's gonna come out, it might <clears throat> suck, it might not be great, but it's like you have to go through that first step in order to build and iterate and get to the point where like, it's super cool. Which iPhone had the antenna issue? Four? That they had to like... Where the, the antenna was the frame and if you squeezed it... You yeah, lose what so you they see. gave out cases. Yeah, the bumper. <laughs> yeah. So that yeah, you weren't touching that. the edge. So there's like, there's always that. And that was four is what you're saying. Like if it's like that late in product and they're still figuring out major bugs like that. And yes, people are pointing out Endgame comes out this week as well. <laughs> it does we come out this we week. We didn't talk about Game of Thrones all episode. We did not talk about Game of Thrones Which is for the best because I assume people hated it last week when we talked about Game of Thrones. So people were annoyed. But I mean, we, it's, it's, it's <clears throat> the most popular entertainment thing right now. I will say this. Uh, no spoilers for last night's episode. No spoilers. One of my comments, the previous episode was because there was that flying sequence. Mm -hmm. And I was like, we just don't have time for this. A lot of people were tweeting me being like, if you didn't have time for that, you must have hated last night's episode. And I just loved it. Last night was great. It was like, that's the stuff I want. Yeah. I don't need, you know, swooping, sweeping montages for five minutes. I just want like cool character stuff because everyone's together. It was super cool. I, I really do love, I like, uh, the show's awesome, obviously. I enjoy the fact that this is one of those rare occurrences that you can clearly tell a good majority of our population is all experiencing this together and all commentating on it together like the fact that this is like something that the episode will come out and you could log onto any social media and immediately start people like commenting on it creating memes and all experiencing it like to an nth degree we don't get that as often because there's so many different shows yeah. out there and there's so many different outlets like maybe when Netflix was first out and we were all watching House of Cards, or we were all watching those kinds of things. It's like it happened a lot more common, but like Netflix alone, like their their stuff they create, they're making new shows every five seconds, and people come and be like, "Oh, you watching so and so?" It's like I just haven't gotten to it yet. Right. But Game of Thrones, we are watching on the day. Okay, I'll tell you what, we only have like four or five minutes left in the podcast. Let's talk about Game of Thrones starting now. Spoilers, sure. Now to the end of the podcast. Are you serious? Yeah. Okay, that way, so if, that way, if, if if somebody hasn't seen it, they don't want a spoiler. Thank you for watching. Yeah, we're gonna talk about Game of Thrones, and we're talking wait, about. What about the what about crew? Oh, you're all. Yeah, they're. Fine. Yeah. So all right, that, that's it. You've been warned. We're going. Um, I'm nervous. I had a tweet. Last I feel like we're doing something we're not supposed to be doing. I had a tweet last naughty. night about how uh, <clears throat> uncomfortable I was with the Bye, sex everyone. scene between uh, Arya and Gendry, and uh, I got some people come, got mad at me. It's like. Oh, I understand why Americans are so prudish. Like you're okay with the raping and the incest and all these other things. Like, well, no one. <laughs> thank you. First of all, no one was actually raped. <laughs> no one. There was no actual incest in the show. It was just weird seeing some like Macy Williams, who started the like, when she started the show. She was what, like 13 or 14, to now have the point where she's disrobing her characters, having a sex scene with another character. It was just like I felt a little awkward about that, and it just felt strange, especially because I guess I still think of her as being the younger Arya Stark. I felt. I was fine with the scene because it's like all the characters have grown up. Everyone's old enough to be doing that. But I just couldn't not think about how weird it must have been for the guy that plays Gendry to be doing that with someone who he must have known when she was like 11 or 12. Right. I assume it was only weird for him. But see, what season was Gendry? Season one? They, they were together in season three. No, but, but like him, his character introdu introduction yeah, he was, was in season one. Because it wasn't, yeah. wasn't it Ned Stark, Stark found finds him? him? Yeah. yeah. And that was the, that's the actor. Actor hasn't changed. Same yeah. actor. And then they they hung out and 
shit in like series Because when Oh wait, but he met her in season one when they started going to the wall. Yeah, because he was she was pretending to be a boy. Right. And then when he finds out, he's like, Oh, you saw my cock. Yeah. However. <laughs> <laughs> so they they found out early. So and uh, this is, we have to get a lot of stuff to get through here with Game of Thrones. They I think I'm worried about next week. I, I think it's gonna be really good, but oh, I, this I, was the pinnacle I had, happy moment for your character before had, they kill them. The I had, entire episode I had was that. So much dread, and I was nervous the entire time watching this episode. Like I felt sick to my stomach the whole time because I was like, a lot of these characters aren't gonna make it through. Like the whole time when Grey Worm's like, "Where do you want to go when we're done with this?" Stop it! Like, Stop making like, plans. Yeah, I was like, like, "No, no, Grey Worm, not you. You're both gonna eat it." You both. John, I, was, I was like, "Oh my god, he's gone." There are some people who we know are gonna die at some point. Right? Yeah. Who? We know that Melisandre's gonna die. Because she she knows that she has to go back to Winterfell to die. She said that. Oh, uh, okay. People who have foretold their death. She also said that Varys was gonna die. Hmm. So I assume he's gonna die. Mm -hmm. A lot of the time when, it, when it's like, oh, this is gonna happen, it happens. Except there, that there, when she says, you sacrifice your daughter and you'll win this battle. Well, she misunderstands things sometimes. But it's just okay. a flame, John. You know, you I'm just see. saying she's not always right. <laughs> And then I, I feel like they're really super telegraphing the fact that the crypts are not safe. Like the they, whole they episode, they're like, the yeah, the crypts lot. are safe. You'll be safe in the crypts. The crypts are the safest place. Like, that's not going to be safe. Someone brought up, like, that the crypts are full of dead people, but can the Night King raise those? Remember at Hard Home when he walks up to the shore and he just goes like this and he brings up all of the dead right. people around him? But those are people that his, his people killed. So you're worried about Ned coming back to life? That's what I'm asking, because people, because someone brought that up, and I'm like, well, he he was given back to he wasn't Catelyn he was, by Littlefinger, and it wasn't in a, a box, and it wasn't maybe all of his parts. I think That's it was just fine. His bones. I'm right. not saying Ned particularly, but I'm just saying like, okay, you're talking about the crypts not being safe. Is it because fucking White Walkers are gonna rise up? In the crypts, maybe because I think it comes down to like they only raise people that they've killed. I don't know about that. No, no, they didn't raise. Because they, wait, the, give me an instance. What about give the, me an instance. They raised someone without them. The killing Rangers them. who were taken back into Castle Black, they killed them. They were dead when they came in. Who, who who killed them? Were they killed by the? They were killed by the White Walkers. They do burn. Well, who all the who bodies. killed them if they didn't? I don't remember. That's, I think it's yeah. the, the Walkers killed them. But they also burn bodies of people who just die. When, like in battles and that. But I think that's like burial. That's like a mm -hmm. warrior's funeral. I liked what the writers are doing where, where they're just kind of, they know that everyone's in one place. So they're trying to think of all these cool interactions that can happen. Yeah. Like the little touches, like I like the tiny little pointless moment where the Mormons were talking to each other. Oh yeah, that was yeah. great. It was like, there's no need for that, but it's very satisfying. Or like, like, oh, that you get to see the, the yeah. Mormon family. It's a bigger moment, but even just like the connections of, of uh, Sam that... Mormon's dad basically raised him, yeah, and so then he passes on his father's sword to him as kind of a pass down from his own. It's just like I didn't, I never, I wouldn't have made that connection of like. Yeah, there, I, I the, thought Mormon would get his dad's sword though. They, he John That's offered John it to has him. That. Yeah. Oh yeah, John offered it to him. He offered it to him. Yeah. He said, uh, "Was it last episode? Was it this? I thought oh. it was last season. Oh no, no, it was last season. Yeah. It's oh. when they meet at before they go ranging north of the wall. He offers him long call back." Oh, and okay. uh, didn't want it? yeah, Jorah declines it. Oh, okay. or like even I, the, I, the, I forgot that one. The conversations that like even Tyrion and Jamie were having about like the last time they were there together and like how their lives were and who they were and that kind of thing is a callback that's insane. And, and there's so many <laughs> in all these people talking. There's so many connections I forgot about or that I never made myself. Yeah, it's like seeing them. Like there's there's a reason you have to go through all those years and all those seasons building all those relationships. And it's like now it's all like really paying off and coming do you together. Think, do you think Bran took down anyone else aside from Hodor? Like mistakenly? Like do you think oh, another, another moment in Game of Thrones history, Bran had like... Because Bran Hodor Hodor. Yeah. Because he was like daisy chaining Hodor two times. Time. What he did. <laughs> but what if, what if like another event in Game of Thrones history was, was that? Do you have a, like a, an, an idea in mind? Well, there's he also well, kind the, of alludes to it when Ned Stark is outside the Tower of Joy. Oh, and he shouts and his name. And he shouts his name and he kind of like looks around. I was just thinking of other moments in the in the show where someone's just been re repeating the same thing. And the Mad King was repeating burn them all. 
Oh, so yeah, I was wondering yeah. if like maybe Bran was uh, trancing out and like shouting about the White Walkers. Yeah, that it like somehow got to him, got to the Mad King, and that's why he was. Although the Mad King was messed up for ages, right? He yeah. he had all that stuff under the yeah. yeah, all the wildfire. Can I vent something that I think people are like too critical of? Hmm. It's Bran's performance. Like a lot of people like make fun of and like are critical of his like wooden performance, but I'm like, are do they? Yeah, I guess I really haven't seen that. There's been a good amount like I mean they obviously made memes about the most recent one about the the two episodes ago where he just kept showing up like behind stuff and I <laughs> fucking love those memes. Those are great. But it was even like the whole last season they made fun of how monotone and wooden his performance was. I, I think that's totally intentional. But that's what I say yeah. the entire time. Well, like, yeah, I mean compare it to other performances in other stuff where that's the same problem like uh in the- Watchmen Dr. Manhattan Kind of sees everything. Yeah, that omniscient. At all times, yeah. and he's in multiple places, yeah. and he's just the same. He's just like, I don't really care about the it's, one interaction it's I'm funny having right now. Esther says the same thing. She always compares Brian to Doctor Manhattan. It's a pers- oh, really? it's a change <laughs> yeah. in perspective. Changes your your. It's pers- just emotionless. It's yeah. just like you've seen everything. You kind of know everything that can happen. So there's not any. That's too much for one brain. It's so funny. That was actually my biggest complaint about this is a stretch, but Guardians of the Galaxy Two was that ego is playing this. Celestial being has been around for millions and millions of years, but he has these very juvenile tendencies and personality traits. And I never, I never, I still enjoyed the movie. And second time I watched it, it didn't bother me as much. But the first time I watched it, I was like, this is an eternal creature who is acting like a petty, you know, 20 year old. And I don't think those personality mm. traits would come through something like that. So then Bran doing this to someone who's like had access to all memory. He is like, they even call out in this episode, he is the memory of all things. Yeah. Like him have that kind of reaction strikes perfectly. All right. Well, let's wrap this up. That was a good episode. It was it was a really good episode. I, 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 how I'm about prediction? First death, next episode. Fuck, dude. First death. First? First death. Next episode. Summer's gonna fucking die next episode. Jorah. Mormont. You think he's the first? I think he's the first. He's like I love Jorah Mormont. He's just I a think good character. He's just um, solid. First death is not gonna be a big death. Like, I would say, like, Jamie would not be something they're going to immediately kill. Who is it? I don't know. Gavin? I'm going with Jorah Mormont. Sam? I think Ooh, be, that'd be brutal. Sam would be very brutal. Maybe, uh, Leanna Mormont. Oh, that'd be sad. Her dying at all is going to be sad. Yeah. All right. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll be back to talk about Game of Thrones again <laughs> next Monday. <laughs> Bye. Hey, do you like the podcast? No. You might like some of the videos below. Why Maybe. don't you click on those and watch them? Don't. Yeah, you absolutely should. Don't, and, don't uh, click on anything. You should also uh, like this video and also subscribe to Rooster Teeth. That way, whenever we make this video or videos like the ones below, you'll get alerted and you'll know. Dislike. Dislike. Do, do uh, not do that. Turn off your computer right